Yeah, let's go straight to what it is. I mean, there was a time you told me that the Formula One car can actually take you from Lagos to Ibadan in less than an hour. Has that changed? At all. Hmm. Way, way far lesser than that. Lagos to Ibadan in the Formula One car, you do that in less than five, ten minutes. Wow. Is that how fast the Formula One car is? Yes, that's the way of this country. But definitely not on Lagos roads, the way, the way our roads are. <laughs> mm. All right, let's talk about the movement in the world of Formula One. Um, Sebastian Vettel leaving Ferrari at the end of the season. Uh, the, Dan Ricciardo moving as well to McLaren, while Sainz is also moving to Ferrari. What do you make of this? Well, um, it's about the time, because these uh, movements have been on for some time, mm. because... Um, Ferrari and Vettel's situation soured after the performance of Charles Leclerc earlier on um, last season. So um, they felt that this is the guy that is the future. Let's keep everything around him uh, uh, rather than a four time world champion who they brought in, hoping that they would be able to deliver them the title. They came so close in 2018 and 2019, but um, this wasn't able to deliver. And um, another thing Ferrari would have looked at was that some of the errors um, Vettel made for a veteran of um, Vettel's caliber, a four-time world champion, some schoolboy errors he wasn't supposed to have made was making them. And um, a guy who was in his rookie season or debut season with Ferrari was doing far better than a veteran who had been in the sport for the last 10 years. To 10 years. So obviously it made a lot of sense for them to stick with um, Charles Leclerc, who just 23, but then he's 32. So and then in the way Ferrari went about it, um, they gave, offered them so was a Vettel a one-year contract and a reduced salary. And Vettel said that for every way he has been, the minimum contract he has signed is three years. So and that um, his future is not guaranteed. To be. Then giving him a ruling contract it was something they did to um, uh, Kim Reichman file to him leaving. So he said that he wouldn't want to be in that situation. So he would leave his first time world champion. He deserves better than that. And, uh, to me, I don't blame Ferrari because um, with the performance we saw last um, season between Vettel and Sebastian, I mean, and Charles Leclerc, yeah. we don't blame them for sticking with Charles Leclerc. Mm. Now, there was also a rumor that he just might be switching over to the Mercedes to probably pair up with Lewis Hamilton. I don't see that as a perfect pairing because I feel like it would take us back to the era of Hamilton and uh, um, Rico Ro Rico Nico Rosberg. That is, if it does happen, but is, that, is there a possibility in that? Well, you can never say never, especially when it comes to um, Formula One. Um, who would have thought that um, they would have uh, signed us about them better and let alone for good? So, um, uh, Vettel to Mercedes, you can't rule that out. So, uh, Valtteri Bottas is tied to uh, Mercedes and so is um, Bruce Hamilton next season. But um, would Vettel want to go into that kind of environment? Yes, it's a German team. Um, would he want to put himself under such pressure with Hamilton in the same team? This is the pressure Hamilton gave him when he was racing in Ferrari and him stepping into the uh, Mercedes car and participating or competing against Hamilton, would he have... It would be an exciting rivalry for the fans, anyway, and for and the Formula 1 lovers. But um, to me, it should be a difficult toll on Vettel because mentally he hasn't been able to handle it every time he's come up against Hamilton. As, um, the only time he was away was at Red Bull, and then there was no match for them. But since they've been able to match them, Vettel hasn't been able to, like, show his dominance against uh, Hamilton. And... Um, Hamilton has so far represented it well for uh, Mercedes winning Grand Prix after Grand Prix championship after championship. And um, they might not want to upset the Apple Park. We saw what Rosberg went to when he won in 2016 and he had to retire because he said that it was mentally draining the pressure Hamilton put him on that. He doesn't want to go through that again. So I don't think someone like a better can handle that pressure. But um, if he wants to race things, uh, the only top team that can give him that right now is Mercedes, and they have to do without Bottas. And Bottas hasn't given them a reason for them to be starting just yet, but Bottas has done reasonably well for the Mercedes team as well. Then um, with um, the science movement from uh, uh, McLaren to uh, Ferrari, it's a good one for him because it's a step up, and then we've seen that uh, he's got the talent, but um, to me, whether I can compete with uh, Charles Leclerc is another thing. He would push him, but I don't think it's going to be enough competition for Charles. But um, only time would say when the season picks up next week in that new pairing. Then um, uh, uh, Danny Ricardo moving over to McLaren. It's a good one for him from the Renault team. Because the Renault couldn't 
um, given the chassis he wanted. So um, him moving to uh, McLaren is like a step up for him. So he would have a few fancy chances. And there's that rumor that Fernando Alonso might be making a return to the Renault team since uh, Daniel Ricciardo has left. So he wants um, a last uh, hurrah in Formula 1. And this was a team he won his double championship with. So him um, getting back to Renault would be a good one for him. But with Renault able to provide uh, Fernando Alonso the car to deliver a world title, that remains to be seen. Thank you very much, David, for speaking with us today. All right. Thank you.